Welcome to PFHO Pro tutorial number 6. Before I start this tutorial, I'd just like to thank Adam Shell of Waveplay for providing the footage in the following tutorial. Also, I'd like to recommend a book. This is The Match Moving Invisible Art of Camera Tracking by Tim Dobbert. Let's load up the footage. Ah, oh, and straight away I've forgotten to show you a new feature. If I load the footage again, what you will see is we now have the ability to edit the frame rate. This feature was added at the request of users and is available free on the PFO website. This footage is also going to be made available on the PFO website along with example exports for all the packages supported by PFO and PFO Pro. The aim of this tutorial is to enable you to get to this stage where what we've done is rebuilt the entire scene in 3D. Let's get started. First off, let's find the distortion on this shot. And here at the edge, nice long one, select that. And now what we're going to do is load in a mat. This will also be made available on the PFO website. And what this does is just shows us that we are now not tracking anything in this mat area. And we'll go ahead and track features. Thanks to the miracle of editing, we're tracked and now we can move on to focal length and scene orientation. Now this is something that I had a few uh, requests about this tool and what I'm going to try and do is explain is what it does. Now it's giving us a ground plane here. For example, let's ignore the fact that we've got these buildings and ignore the car as well. So we want to place the ground plane on what we think is the ground. We're giving PFO a chance to say, look, you know, this is a ground plane, this is in the X, this is in the Y, this is in the Z, depending on which package you're using. The other use of this tool is to actually give you your vocal length or your field of view. As you can see, if I move this around, it starts changing the field of view. And if you know the field of view of the camera that shot the footage, then one thing you can do is actually try and get those figures to match up, and that will help match up the camera far better. Also, if you get to a stage where you've confused and it's all looking a bit messy, you can hit the spacebar and reset the tool and start again. On this particular shot, we've got a building that we could use here, or even this building here. Anything that uh, gives you an idea of where everything's placed in the scene. Thanks to the magic of editing, I've had time to do some tidy up and now all we need to do is hit the solve. After another quick edit we have our solve and the next thing to do is check it in 3D. As you can see we actually have quite a good solution. See the edges of the building here and here, and the grass and foliage here. Back in 2D what we can do is now export the undistorted footage. Now that's done, we can export the camera data to our 3D package of choice. Here we have the scene imported into Nuke. The camera movement and all the object data has been passed through. Now all we need to do is rebuild our scene in 3D. To do this, 
I use the data supplied from PFO to actually give me information about where to put the buildings. First of all, I constructed a ground plane and then the office and the industrial unit and then finally a sky dome. What this will allow us to do, if I go back to the 2D view, turn off the camera features and if I go back to the beginning turn off the ground plane sorry turn off the sky dome first and now you can see how the backgrounds have been projected onto our geometry and what this allows us to do is change the buildings painting something nicer than this big horrible industrial unit here and basically be able to keep the camera move over with only doing a 2D paint on a single frame. That wraps it up for this tutorial. I hope it's given you an insight to using PFO Pro.